our newest addition to the Body by Bush Gym is this Marcy rack, storage rack for all the slam balls, the kettlebells, and also the bumper plates. So I'm, I'm not sure if the bumper plates will all fit on here, but there's one way to find out. Here is the end product overall. I'm really happy with it. Um, other than the top here, where it's like sandpapery, a, sa a slab of sandpaper with sticky stuff on the backside. <laughs> it was all uh, lifted and crooked, bubbly, and not aligned, but it was easy to pull it up and place it back down so it's more looks neater, I guess, but it did not look good at all right away. So that was a disappointment, but hey. And if you want bumper plates to fit on each of the, the pegs, they will not fit. They will overlap. So what we had to do was we put the bumpers on the squat rack. So just moved up the 25 and the 10, and then we put the fives over on the the new rack that we got, but it's looking a little bare. Need to get a couple more kettlebells and also ball slams. I tried to put the dumbbells, the adjustable dumbbells on there, but uh, they don't release from their separate stand very well. And just the dumbbell on the rack wouldn't look good either. So, hey, that's my newest addition to the gym and plenty more to come. Hopefully I could get this whole thing done by the end of the year or the majority of it because I know I'm always going to be wanting something new but now let's do some running so what we're doing today is it's Thursday um, and hey welcome to the video once again from the shop what we're going to do is a sweat test today to determine like how much fluids I lose during a run like for an hour an hour stretch and I have to keep my my pace or intensity at about what I will do for the race and this will give me a great idea on how much fluids to have per hour during the run race or any long activity in general um, so the temperature today is going to be high upper 80s and the forecast for the Matahe is 91 as of right now, so it's close enough. And we'll utilize what we learned today. And um, yeah, I'll do it and I'll show you guys, I'll talk more about it after we get going. So first thing I gotta do is weigh myself buck A. So let's get stripped down and naked. Alrighty, so we weigh, we, <laughs> I weigh 171 fully nude, and now it's time to go run for an hour at race intensity pace, which I'm just gonna go between 11 and 12 minutes per mile. So I'm gonna be around five minutes. And yes, I get to wear clothes when I run. I think, or shouldn't I? No, oh, I suppose I will. Um, but then when we get back, Strip on down right away, weigh myself again right away, and then take the difference of the weight, and I'll show you what to do after that, I guess. I, this is my first time doing it, so I'm no expert, but I've been doing a lot of reading, researching, and I'm taking a class, actually, for ultra marathon coaching, and I've learned a ton. I, I'm mainly doing it for my own personal benefit, but then potentially coaching people in it with it in the future. So we'll see what happens. But right now I'm just trying to learn as much as I can so I can feel my best, my absolute best during these races. So let's get to running. See how many, how much weight I lose in an hour. Welcome to the office. Now we're gonna, oh wait, never off track. Just a reminder, friendly reminder. Um, but what we're gonna do now is calculate how much water or fluids I need to be intaking per hour. So what we're gonna do is take, since I lost 2.6 pounds during that hour long test, my heart rate was a little more elevated than it should be for what I did, which 
kind of probably threw it off a little bit, but I could adjust accordingly. Um, this doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. It's just good to get a pretty good idea off of it. Um, so since I lost 2.6 pounds, need to multiply that by 16 because there's 16 ounces in a pound. And when you multiply 2.6 times 16 is 41.6, I believe. So that will, and this course that I'm taking, their recommendation is to replace 90 to 95% of fluid that is lost. So, um, 36-ish ounces will be about right. And that's great if I just have two handhelds, which are both 18 ounces. And also if I have the vest on and I just have the two front uh, bladders, those are 20 ounces a piece. So whether I have just handhelds or if I have the vest on, I know a pr I have a pretty dang good idea of how much fluids I'm getting in. So there's that and then my sodium, I'm still playing around with that, so I'm not going to go over that with you guys in this video, but I have a pretty good idea. I'm just going to stick with G1M Sport, the hydration supplement from BPN, so I get some good uh, carbohydrates in there as well as yeah, the electrolytes, 350 milligrams of sodium, and then I'm looking for pickle juice, pickle sport pickle juice, like the their highly concentrated like little shots of pickle juice which I know they're gonna be at one of the stores I looked at <laughs> I went to a couple of the stores in town here that were su that supposedly had it but neither of them did dang it so I'll, I'll find it eventually come race week and if not I'll figure something out so um, that is what it is and yeah that's what we're gonna do for hydration we're gonna be having we we are 36-ish ounces per hour. And that's gonna depend on time of day too. Like earlier on in the day when it's still cool, I'll probably do more like 30 ounces. And then as it gets hotter, I will probably be doing 40 plus ounces when it gets to the peak of the day, like when it's 91 and the sun's just beating down. And if, especially if there's not much of a breeze either. So it's, 56 miles and it's yeah who knows you gotta adjust as you go so this is this is a good thing to know and practice with but it's not perfect it's never perfect so if i start cramping i'll have more sodium and if my pee is too clear i'll start intaking less fluids so little types of adjustments like that but I do not want to cramp like I did during the Black Hills 50K. So that's my plan for hydration. And now I want to share with you guys a little bit of what I meal prepped this week. Pork tenderloin, check it out. So here is the main meal prep meal that I've been eating all week long. Very, very simple. Of course, I, I did. I always smoke my my meat now for the most part. Um, this is pork tenderloin. This stuff, not pork loin. I didn't know there was a difference between pork loin and pork tenderloin. Um, pork loin is where you're gonna get like pork chops from, but tenderloin is gonna be the longer and skinnier like tubes of. I wouldn't shouldn't say tubes, but just a slab, <laughs> long and skinny slab of meat, the pork tenderloin, and the macros per four ounces of pork tenderloin is 23 grams of protein and only four grams of fat. So if you're getting sick of chicken or you want another lean source of protein, go with pork tenderloin. I think pork loin is pretty lean too. I'd have to look that up again, but pork is cheap just as cheap as chicken if not cheaper so i highly recommend but how i cooked it was I smoked it at 215 degrees and what i used was this rub right here i've got it from shields if you're from the midwest you know shields well they're expanding quite a bit so a lot of you probably know what that is um so i rubbed that on i got them to room temperature then I, yeah, smoked it at 215 for an hour. 
and then I put the thermometers in them, the meat probe thermometers, and then I cooked it at 215 after I added barbecue sauce until the internal temperature reached 145 degrees. Since that's the recommended minimum and it's completely fine for pork to be slightly pink and I haven't gotten sick all week and there has been some little bit of pink of it, a little bit of pink in it. But I wanna show you guys like how it's not chewy at all when you cook it right. I didn't think cooking it to the right temperature would make such a huge, huge difference as far as tenderness goes. So here's a slab right here. Yeah, that one was honestly more chewy than usual. Here. Yeah. I just pulls apart. Like, look. Oh! Unreal. So if you want meal prep to taste good and you have a, a smoker, I highly recommend even chicken breast. I smoked chicken breast the other week and oh, that was amazing. And I'm going to do it again. That's what I'm going to do next week. Uh, race week. Um, but what else I have here is some asparagus and then of course Uncle Ben's ready rice. So I'm pretty sure every single one of you have seen this before and some days I'm feeling a little lazy and I just go to this. But most of the time I actually have legit rice that I put in a bowl and I microwave it. it takes a little longer but I know there's a couple added ingredients in here. It's not the end of the world. Um, but I'd say like one out of every five times I make rice, I just lean on this because it's so easy. 90 seconds in the microwave, like perfect. But yeah, this is simple. The only thing, you just got to commit to some time with smoking the pork or chicken breast. And it took about two and a half hours. So it's completely worth it if you can be like around the house or in the yard. Start it up and let it let it do its thing it's not like you can't multitask and do other things during it and the reward is amazing like i get to eat smoked pork tenderloin all week and it's also a very simple meal and it's satisfying very satisfying oh and i wanted to share like if i was like trying to stay lean or cut like i typically am in the summer and not doing all this running i would use uh g hughes sugar-free barbecue sauce. Always, I lean on this stuff. It's good, tasty, and very, very low calorie. 10 calories per two tablespoons, so that's amazing. But since I'm trying to get in as many calories as I can with doing this running and making sure I'm fueled, I'm leaning on some full sugar barbecue sauce because I need it and it, it tastes a little better. But this stuff, shit. Always, it's good. This is all I got for this week's video, you guys. I did do the 15 miles on Monday, and it felt good. My last mile was six and a half minutes, and I probably shouldn't have did that, but I was just like getting so impatient. I wanted to just be done, but now it's just rest and recover. So the only runs that I am doing this week is that 15 miler that I did Monday, and then that five mile sweat test that I did. And that's all I'm gonna do. And then next week, I'll probably do like a two mile run and a one mile run or two two mile runs or something on Monday, Wednesday. That's my guess. And then of course, it's race week. So Saturday, we have 56 miles. So that is gonna be here in no time. I'm getting more excited, but also I'm still scared of course but it's gonna be good and i'm hope i just want to finish almost for you guys <laughs> more than anything because if i if i don't finish ah uh, you guys are my motivation so i'm gonna be constantly thinking about you guys when i'm out there and i do not want to let you down i do not i that's something that bothers me so i'll stop rambling now appreciate you guys if you watch this whole ramble toward through the end here absolutely love you. Um, I love you all, but have an amazing rest of your week and I look forward to the race next week and hopefully you enjoy that video as well. So just remember, never off track and cheers.
to pork tenderloin. Oh. <laughs>